Okay, screen is fine. Hmm. Okay, so we'll start with radiation heat transfer. So what is radiation transfer? Anyone? Sir, radiation is the transfer is the heat transfer to the radiation of the body. Mm -hmm. When the body is at high temperature, it radiates energy. Mm -hmm. So, due to which we transfer C. Okay, so the idea is that a body at high temperature is able to radiate energy. So, uh, say sun. Sun radiates energy. And on the earth, if you stand, in winter, you get part of this energy, right? So this is a radiation heat transfer from sun to earth. And there is atmosphere here, but there is almost vacuum on the space. And this heat or energy transferred through Space. So that is what is uh, what makes it very different from conduction or convective heat transfer. So radiation is very different from conductive or convective heat transfer because both conductive and convective heat transfer requires matter for transfer of that energy. But for radiation heat transfer, it transfers through space without any aid from any matter. So that is radiation heat transfer. So now let us see that. So this is basically electromagnetic radiation. So in a more technical language, so electromagnetic radiation that uh, propagates through space even through gas, even medium. So it propagates through space. Space is everywhere, right? So even if you have uh, atoms or molecules, the, uh, there is a plenty of uh, vacuum or space between nucleus and electrons. So uh, there is space. So even from through that, that space uh, radiation can uh, propagate. So even through matter, it can propagate. So we know that we all have uh, undergone X-ray some point or other. So that's also another electromagnetic radiation of smaller wavelength uh, that, that passes through our body. So uh, not all uh, electromagnetic radiation um, uh, lead to heat effects. So let us look at uh, this part. So So first let us go here. So this is what uh, happens to a body. So let me take this one. So this is what happens to a body when we have uh, this uh, electromagnetic radiation that is going and coming through a body. So heat effects are due to electromagnetic radiation. So this is a solid, say any engineering material and it's inside a surrounding. So surrounding maybe uh, if we just put it on the surface of earth, this is the surrounding. Okay. So the space is the surrounding. Surrounding doesn't mean it has to be enclosed in a room. So there are two things happen. 
that this body itself can radiate some energy. It may be an electric bar, may be a hot uh, stone. So it uh, radiates some amount of energy. And the hot stone may be in the sun. So it also receives some uh, radiation from the surrounding. So the net radiation is the uh, just uh, algebraic sum of this uh, radiation that it receives and radiation that it emits. So uh, this is what is a nutshell, what we need to worry about in a uh, radiation heat transfer for engineering purpose. That some radiation it receives, some radiation it, uh, it releases, and what is the net radiation, what is the net heat flux due to radiation. So that is uh, what we will be worrying about in this course. So what is the net heat flux due to radiation? It's uh, showing vacuum here. Uh, that uh, because uh, here we want to show that the pure radiation, in actual cases there will be gas or liquid or something, so radiation will uh, may not be alone, so radiation may be along with Q convective or Q conductive, both may be there. Huh? So this is a general case. But uh, we normally if we have convection radiation is the typical coupling, we will see. Hmm. So this is the engineering uh, problem that you will see and let me delete this for time being, how to delete this. So now let us move to the next thing. Okay, so our next uh, top subtopic, let me call it sub rather than talk. <coughs> there is a typical question that asked by people is that whether radiation is a surface phenomena or volume phenomena. So the answer to this question is that it depends on what kind of object you are talking about. So this, this solid that we have said, instead of solid, if I just say that it's a matter or material. So then the question is that the where from where from the radiation comes. So that depends on whether the body is opaque or transparent. For a transparent body, for example, gas. So this flame, so flame radiates a good amount of energy and most of the furnace uh, depend on that uh, radiant energy. So there the radiation comes from the volume of the gas. So this is the volume of the gas and these gas molecules, they radiate energy. But for opaque solid, so this for this gas case, this uh, radiation energy comes from the entire volume of the gas. So if this is a flame, so entire volume of the flame is uh, giving radiation, not only the surface. But if it's a hot stone which uh, is radiating energy, for such cases radiation comes from the surface. It doesn't come from the volume. Why? Why uh, gas radiation comes from the volume and for this stone it comes from the surface? Because this densely spaced matter so whatever radiation comes from the volume, that will be absorbed by other molecules. Hmm. So they will not be able to reach outside. But this is because the molecules are well spaced for gas, the radiation, even from the volume, goes outside. So that is the reason. That's why it's a solid or liquid, mostly radiation uh, uh, is, uh, doesn't go out. Now uh, you, you may be skeptical about it being liquid because you know that uh, if you keep a glass of water and if you, you can pass light through it, light is also a sort of radiation. So yes, so uh, some radiation may pass through the liquid but not all. So mostly the radiation that we are talking about for engineering application, those will be absorbed by molecules. So third subtopic before we take, a, uh, take questions, is that which radiation we are talking about. 
so can also pull it here. So, uh, radiation, as you know that, so known electromagnetic radiation, so this range that is shown here is known electromagnetic radiation. There may be even uh, shorter ranges, we may not be able to detect those. So, uh, gamma rays are the very short wavelength, then X-rays, then ultraviolet, then this is the range of electromagnetic radiation that creates thermal effect and there is microwave. Microwave, some part of microwave creates thermal effect, some part doesn't create uh, so much of uh, uh, thermal effect. So, mostly the thermal effect is by this infrared and this small portion is only this is a uh, visible range and note that is a log scale. Hmm. So, we never get heats up when we are uh, under X-ray, although a small time but X-ray normally doesn't make much of heat effect. For having a good amount of heat effect, that electromagnetic radiation has to interact with the molecules and make the molecule vibrate more. So, not all electromagnetic radiation make the molecule vibrate. So, uh, unless the electromagnetic radiation is making the molecules vibrate, so we will not see any heat effect because heat is because of the vibration of molecules. So, this part of the electromagnetic radiation that gives us vibration of molecules and heat effects. So, let us now go back to the three concepts that we discussed. So, first concept, what is radiation heat transfer? Again to summarize that from some body, hot body, electromagnetic radiation goes out and falls on another body and thereby as I said that some part of the that is electromagnetic radiation make the molecules vibrate more, so make the matter heated. So that is the radiation heat transfer in a uh, coarse engineering term. And how it uh, works? So it goes through vacuum and for engineering application, we have to worry about two things, how much energy the body is radiating how much energy the body is receiving because the body is always somewhere when it gets some energy from somewhere. It's not in an enclosure of uh, absolute zero, so it, and, and it receives some energy and it releases some energy. So, we are interested in the net amount of radiation energy it releases. So, concept one is what is radiation heat transfer? Concept two is to keep in mind that we need to worry about the net rate there is release and receiving, so the net rate is what is the what we need to worry about. Third concept is that whether radiation is a volume phenomena or surface phenomena for transparent materials, uh, especially gases, this is a volumetric phenomena. Flames, for example, the engineering example is flames entire volume of the flame uh, uh, releases radiation energy but for surfaces for example tube surface pipe surface so these are not volumetric phenomena this comes from the surface because the matter is so dense that whatever radiation the inner uh, molecules are trying to radiate those will be absorbed by the surrounding molecule only a few molecular layer near surface those radiation will go out so, this is volumetric versus surface phenomena and next concept was that the entire electromagnetic range is pretty wide, but only a small fraction of that electromagnetic radiation lead to heat effect, that is the vibration of molecules. So, these are the a few basic concepts of radiation heat transfer. Now, if you have any question, let us discuss.
So what are the greenhouse gases? Name at least uh, two greenhouse gases. Okay. okay, so three we have water vapor, CO2, and methane. So why nitrogen and oxygen are not, uh, not greenhouse gas? And uh, methane, water vapor, and carbon dioxide are greenhouse gas? They are. Hmm? They absorb the radiation. They absorb the radiation. So, uh, this, when the sun's radiation comes through our, uh, to our, um, uh, uh, our surface, our radiation, uh, it radiates at different wavelengths from the surface. What is special about uh, these gases so that they absorb part of this radiation or re-radiation? which nitrogen or oxygen cannot? So how many atoms are in nitrogen? Mm -hmm. Two. Oxygen? Two. Carbon dioxide? Mm -hmm. Three. Methane? Four. What are number? Three. So you see that normally these polyatomic gases, which has more than uh, two atoms, they are very good uh, in absorbing radiation. So that's why any polyatomic gas will uh, be a good absorber of radiation. So uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, hydrocarbon and other things in the flame, they radiate good amount of energy. Okay. So now let us, uh, these are small, small concepts, but uh, these are important. And now let us move to that distribution of radiation. distribution of radiation. So there are two types of distribution of radiation. So a radiation that is coming from a surface has two distributions. See, if a surface that is radiating energy, it doesn't radiate at a single wavelength. Uh, so for example, sun's surface, it radiates from around 400 to 800 uh, uh, nanometer. Hmm. So 400 to 800, little bit more than uh, visible. So small uh, ultraviolet and small amount of infrared. So it's around uh, here to here. So, sun's surface, it doesn't radiate a single wavelength. Similarly, any surface, even if you take a uh, hot uh, surface of a tower, so that will also not radiate a single wavelength. So, this will always be distributed over a length, range of wavelengths. And this picture is actually misleading because it doesn't tell you that how, uh, how much it differ in wavelength, so let us better go to another picture. Here. Okay. So, this is how this uh, distribution of energy from that is coming radiating from a surface varies with wavelength. So you see that it can vary over 
थ्री टू एट फाइव ऑर्डर्स ऑफ मैग्नीच्यूड फाइव ऑर्डर्स ऑफ मैग्नीच्यूड वेरिएशन सो इट्स नॉट लेस सो इट्स ए ह्यूज वेरिएशन इट ग्राफ दीज आर नॉट स्केल ग्राफ so whenever you look at the graph always mind the scale so that gives you some idea that how uh, much variation you see so you see that this variation that we have seen here actually five orders of magnitude variation so uh, the spectral distribution that is called spectral distribution i don't know how to make this writing move with this uh, picture so this is this is spectral distribution so uh, um, uh, so if if you if you are talking about the intensity intensity of this radiation so the intensity of radiation will be depending on other factors but along with the lambda wave length so at certain lambda the intensity might be more at certain lambda the intensity might be less so if i compare sun's radiation and uh, the radiation comes from the tube light so what is the spectral difference so blue light intensity which one has more blue light intensity sun ah sun sun no so blue is intensity is more in uh, this uh, tube light that's why you have need the blue light filter Uh, not tube light, but uh, uh, many of the artificial lights has uh, more uh, blue. The lambda in the blue is more uh, in those. Intensity of blue lambda is uh, more for those cases. So the uh, radiation that comes from any surface that depends on lambda, and that also depends on theta. That is less intuitive. So lambda is intuitively we can feel. but theta means the radiation intensity and uh, even the spectral distribution depends on from which angle you are looking at even for a given lambda hmm. see for example uh, let us select the lambda equals to 530 hmm. uh, nanometer so uh, 530 so this is i think blue right So 450 to 490. That is the lambda is blue. 450 to 490. So okay, I I I mixed it with green because uh, if green is absorbed, it gives a little bit of green state. Okay. So uh, let us say 460. Hmm. Lambda is 460 nanometer. So we fix the lambda. Now we are looking at the surface. and say so this is the surface and if i look at this direction the 460 nanometer may be less looking at this direction 460 nanometer radiation may be more so what does that mean if a surface has that feature what does that mean say all other say it's also radiating all other lambdas so surface which is radiating at all lambdas radiating at all lambda but the 
different uh, for a given lambda we have different intensity in different direction what will happen because of that okay before that maybe we can uh, approach a simpler question if i take a surface and say we send white light to it hmm? so lambda equals to 400 to 800 and now let it uh, absorb anything uh, below 520 hmm absorb anything below 500 uh, anything uh, above 520 so 520 so 400 to 800 and it absorbs anything greater than 520 absorbed and less than 520 reflected so what will happen will look bluish okay so it will look bluish because it will uh, it will uh, it will reflect only 520 uh, below 520 okay so below 520 reflected so it will look bluish so that is how uh, the color comes so different surfaces different properties and those are all uh, dependent on wavelength at different wavelength it will behave differently so that gives rise to color so it preferentially absorbs uh, a certain uh, wavelength and uh, reflects other so then you see the color so that may mostly because of dye molecules so dye molecules has those properties so you embed dye molecule on the surface so they will uh, do that kind of stuff and you will see a color surface now let us look at uh, this thing so you send all lambda and this direction so direction and distribution so at different direction it sends different uh intensity you can see different intensity of a given lambda so this direction you see 460 nanometer more this direction you see 460 nanometer less and 460 nanometer means blue so some direction you have more blue light reflected some direction you see the less blue light reflected So what will happen? The color, the color depends, depends on the direction. Yes. So the color will depend on from which direction you uh, view the surface. And that is important for our understanding because say, although the visible uh, range is very small portion of uh, that is interstellar transfer, but gives us a clear, immediate visual uh, understanding that oil radiation is dependent on the uh, direction. So the radiation is dependent on direction. And uh, let me see if I can get this. Uh, what is that that is called a the name of that written it somewhere
you see that from depending on from which direction you are viewing the color is depends ha huh? color changes so that's because the intensity of radiation of different lambda is different at different uh, angle viewing angle so here it's greenish here it's uh, blue because the angle is different no? so here it's scarf so the angle is different so here it's more blue here is less blue hmm okay so that is the uh, who is not muted i'm getting some noise is mute yourself all right i think it's coming from here yeah done okay so this is the directional distribution so in terms of uh, mathematical uh, approach we can say that i is a function of uh, you can say it's a theta phi so in spherical coordinate theta phi and lambda so the intensity of radiation heat uh, thermal radiation that you can see is a theta phi and lambda these are the three variables that on which uh, intensity depends okay so now let us uh, think of the intensity of radiation let us see what's our yeah so next let us look at the heat fluxes so these are the three heat fluxes which will be important for us so i think i can also pull it okay so first thing is the emissive power so next concept is emissive power so that is the rate at which radiation is emitted from a surface per unit area so it depends on the temperature of the surface emissive power is dependent on the temperature of the surface this is the energy that is emitted per unit area of the surface it depends on a surface property which is called emissivity we'll we will see all these things in more detail but uh, right now it's important that we just uh, gloss through those ideas because that is helpful when we discuss these in detail so all these ideas we'll just quickly look at and discuss briefly and then we'll come back for their detail analysis so the emissive power is the rate at which radiation is emitted from a surface per unit area so that is dependent on one surface uh, dependent property this is emissivity surface temperature and this is a constant called stefan boltzmann constant so this is this gives us that how much power the surface will radiate per unit area of all wavelengths in all directions another quantity is irradiation that means how much energy it receives the rate at which radiation is incident upon the surface per unit area so we can look at our previous one and we can see that uh, this is basically radiation from the surrounding is g and this surface radiation emission is e and then we have another quantity which is new here is radiosity radiosity is the rate at which radiation leaves a surface per unit area so what is the difference between the radiosity and emissivity any idea yeah 
Radiosity is less than equal to emissive power. That's what you are saying, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, that is correct. That is uh, that also says that uh, why we need something called radiosity because we also intuitively understand that the surface is emitting something. So that is the uh, that is we have the way we have written it. That's a completely dependent on surface itself. The emissivity is surface property. T S is surface temperature. Stephen Boltzmann constant is constant. So whatever it emits in in the emissivity, that's the solely the property of the surface. Nothing to do with where it is. But depending on where it is, for example, my table surface is now uh, getting some radiation from the sun. So and the part of the radiation is reflected. So I if I look here, I am looking at the surface. I have no way to distinguish which radiation is coming from the sun and which radiation is coming from the uh, surface itself. Even if I cover the sun, then I know that yes, this is the radiation. But if I look and not able to cover, then I will not be able to know that which portion is coming from the sun and which portion is coming from because of the surface itself. So that's the uh, that's why we need the quantity radiosity. The radiosity takes. The both the quantities that is also evident here. That radiosity is E plus rho g, and E is the that uh, energy that the surface radiates because of its property, and g the rho g is the uh, portion that is reflected. G is the global radiation it is encountering. And not all part of the global radiation it will be able to reflect. Only a part it will be reflected. That fraction is given by rho. So rho g is the part of the global radiation uh, irradiation. It is reflecting. So if I add these two, that gives me the total amount of radiation that leaves the surface per unit area. Part of it because of the surface itself, surface temperature itself, but part. Of because of the reflected radiation, and why it's written for an opaque solid or opaque surface? What what uh, bars us from applying this from a transparent surface? Maybe if we look at this picture, it will be a little easier. See transparent surface also. Uh, say this if the surface is transparent, so this reflection is G reflection and emission here J is E plus G reflected. But for transparent surface, say suppose this also receives the bottom surface also receives some amount of G bottom. This part of this will be transmitted, so the transmitted fraction is tau times g bottom, and part of this will also come here. So you have to include that. So uh, that's why to make it simple, we have written for opaque surface j equals to e plus rho g. So this is just uh, we are just giving some basic ideas. We are not going into details and very extensive things of these ideas. So that's why we keep it simple. And says for opaque surface, J equals to E plus rho G. Easy to understand. Okay. And net radiative flux is J minus G. Net radiative flux is J minus G. That is, this much is leaving the surface. This much is falling on the surface. So this is the. That's why this is the net flux. And net rate of radiation leaving the surface per unit area. That is given by so I just we just substituted this by uh, J is uh, uh, J minus alpha G for opaque surface. This is uh, J is the radiosity. So you will see that you have to substitute this E from this equation, then uh, G, and then you have to take uh, take these three fractions. So actually, whatever radiation falls. A fraction is reflected. That is rho. Tau 
cross reaction is transmitted and alpha is a fraction that is absorbed absorbed means that radiation is transferred into thermal energy so the molecules they vibrate and the uh, heat of the body is get body gets heats heated up so that is the absorbed energy so because these three are fractions and nothing uh, uh, falls uh, beyond these three fractions so rho plus tau plus alpha equals to 1 so using this relation and some little bit algebra this alpha comes here we'll see this later so this introduced uh, introduces the three basic terms mc power e irradiation g and radiosity j so and also net radiative flux q double prime rad any question sir so, i am giving the radiosity yeah so radiosity is the rate at which radiation leaves the surface per unit area now the radiation uh, can leave from two sources so suppose we have a surface at ts it will uh, it is isolated from the environment so then it will release energy at uh, according to this e epsilon sigma ts according to whatever is surface uh, temperature according to it will accordingly it will radiate now suppose the surface is a uh, mirror surface and we uh, radiate uh, sun's energy or some high energy on that mirror surface so it will reflect that uh, good part of that energy so now this will give you energy and top of this e ha huh? because uh, some energy that fall on the surface is reflected so when we add this two that is called radiosity Are you clear now? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Now that is called radiosity. So now you can uh, you can see that uh, this uh, J equals to E plus rho G. E is that it emits of its own, and uh, G is the global radiation it receives, and the rho is the fraction of global global radiation that it reflects. To add this two up, you will know that total energy that comes out of the surface. Okay. Hmm. Another small thing we'll discuss and then uh, close our discussion for today. So let us look at the surface. Uh, look at a small elementary surface. Hmm. And let us stand a distance r from the surface. and now if i take a small area and a large area and even larger area so anyone has any doubt that this smaller area will receive small energy larger area will receive large energy this will receive largest energy so any doubt on that डीए so all these areas are differential areas so you can always have differential area of different uh, double size triple size 2 da1 is also a differential area right so i'm all i'm saying is that if i gradually increase the area so this is a surface of a, a hot surface radiating energy so it will radiate energy in all directions so let me draw those so i think that if i draw rays it will be easier so it is radiating in all direction 
in a hemisphere right in a hemisphere it is uh, radiating now i am saying that i take a small area here and if i make it little bigger it will receive more energy so now to you express your concern let me see what you are saying hmm sir actually i think the ad was the difference of ad1 and ad2 so now i am clear no okay all right so all you are saying very simple thing that you are standing somewhere something is radiating if you gradually increase the area the total energy that you receive will be more so the total energy received is proportional to the area that you are talking about okay now these are all so now let us see that if i say in this point actually i am what i am doing is that i am expanding the cone right so in other words what i am saying is that the energy received say let us call it e uh, let us call it q the thermal energy received is proportional to the angle and what kind of angle we are talking about here because we are talking about a hemisphere it's a three dimensional picture what kind of angle we are talking about solid, solid, solid angle, angle. exactly this is solid angle so the amount of heat energy received by a differential area is depending on dependent on the solid angle it subtends on the point on a solid so basically we are on a solid we have a solid say large solid hmm we say the differential area and we say that how much energy i receive at this point so i join this point make a differential area here and ask how much angle this differential area subtends of course it will be a differential angle and this energy received by this area is proportional to this differential angle so let us call it uh, what is that d alpha or something what is the notation i want to stay consistent with the notation and what is the unit of solid angle steady radius steady radius omega here yeah, the notation is omega yeah. so the notation is d omega so q is proportional to or dq is proportional to d omega okay and uh, what we have to do now is that see is difficult to deal with uh, uh, this solid angle for us because we will be uh, doing integration of our hemisphere and we are familiar with uh, uh, this uh, theta phi uh, coordinate of uh, uh, spherical coordinate so we will express this solid angle in terms of uh, in terms of this uh, theta phi so for that we will need to look at this again i take a screenshot so that so first we uh, we just uh, recall that what is how how we define the angle in radians we know that da equals to r d alpha actually d alpha is defined as dl over r so that is the definition of two dimensional angle as we know that if i take an arc of length dl and uh, this radius is r 
the ratio of this dl over r is called d alpha the angle in radian it's uh, uh, it's a three dimensional analog is that if i take an area so in three dimensional analog of length is area so in a three dimensional in a sphere if i take a uh, cap on the sphere say this kind of cap and then go to the center and this ratio between this area and r square is defined as d omega okay so this is the d omega now uh, we want to write this uh, d omega in terms of uh, uh, spherical coordinate theta phi and r but i will not trust through that so let us keep it for uh, uh, next class a uh, friday class uh, this is not this friday so um, this friday tomorrow is our uh, conduction test and then next friday arnav will take and after that i will resume so what you have to do is that before the class resumes in uh, mid march i think uh, 12 march uh, you need to revise this portion and come back prepared <laughs> so just read from the beginning of this chapter maybe about 10 pages very nicely written in this textbook so gives a very clear idea about radiation chapter 12 uh read i think you can also read this this portions you keep reading so that when you discuss in the class it will be clear uh so there are identical things there's not much difference yeah uh, before uh, section 12.4 so you just read till uh, was 12.3 section and come back on uh, 12 march and uh, tomorrow we'll have our exam any question please feel free to ask now